Welcome to the last 40 minutes of the 96 years of 500 KCs from United Kingdom coast stations. And I offer no apology for never getting used to calling it 500 kilohertz. This video was originally conceived as a personal record of an historic event that was expected to last a few minutes starting at 2348 GMT on the 31st of December 1997. 40 minutes later, it became clear that the actual closure messages from Port Patrick, Wick, Colorcoats and Land's End and the numerous acknowledgements had been an extremely moving occasion and perhaps this video would be appreciated by a wider audience of radio officers past and present. To set the scene, a brief history of the 500 KC's WT service. Following his early experiments in the late 1890s, by the end of 1899 Marconi had so increased the range he could work that his experimental stations at Bournemouth and the Isle of Wight were too close together. In June 1900 his new station at St Catherine's Point on the Isle of Wight was operational. January 1901 saw work completed on another station at the Lizard in Cornwall. On January the 23rd, 1901, signals from St Catherine's Point were received at the Lizard. By the end of June 1901, stations had been built at Withensea, Caister, North Foreland, the Lizard, Hollyhead, Port Stewart, Rosslare and Crookhaven. On the 26th of September 1901, Marconi signed a 14-year agreement with Lloyds, who were to carry out what was described as the sea signalling. 1901 saw the first British merchant vessel to be fitted with wireless when Marconi equipped the Beaver Lines Lake Champlain. The WT service as we know it had begun. In January 1904, the Marconi Company issued a notice to its ships, stating it has been brought to our notice that the call CQ, while being satisfactory for general purposes, does not sufficiently express the urgency required in a signal of distress. Therefore, on and after the 1st of February 1904, the call to be given by ships in distress, or in any way requiring assistance, shall be CQD. Later that year, the Wireless Telegraphy Act was passed, giving the Postmaster General full control over the use of WT in the United Kingdom. The Berlin Radio Conference in 1906, attended by delegates from 30 countries, decreed that the international distress signal be changed from CQD to SOS. First use of the SOS signal was logged at the Lizard from Minnehaha, which went aground on the Isles of Scilly in 1910. As late as 1912, the Titanic used both CQD and SOS. Silence periods were imposed in 1912 when there were 479 coast stations and just 2,753 ships fitted worldwide. 
1913 saw a major upgrade of post office stations. The Lizard Station was moved to St Just. Rosslare would be moved to Valencia with a 10 kilowatt transmitter. Malinhead would have its station upgraded. Knighton's power would be increased to 1.5 kilowatts. 1913 also saw the first WT installation on fishing vessels, with first mention of WIC radio. By 1918 there were 3,347 British ships fitted with WT. Following the Titanic disaster in 1912, Marconi had been working on a project whereby a receiver could be made to sound a bell on the receipt of a signal sent by a ship in distress and the auto alarm was officially adopted by the radio conference of 1919. Thus, by 1921, the WT service on 500 KCs had developed to the situation that we all recognise, with stations at Wick, Colourcoats, Grimsby, North Foreland, Knighton, Land's End, Fishguard, Seaforth, Port Patrick, Valencia and Malin Head. The radio conference of 1927, attended by 80 countries, banned spark transmission from coast stations from the 1st of January 1935 and by ships from 1940. The 1932 conference in Madrid introduced the 12 four-second dashes for the auto alarm and made fitting compulsory on single operator ships. This completed the evolution of the 500 KC's WT service, with further developments being only in the form of more refined transmitters and receivers. The post office 1 kW W5 transmitters, installed in the mid-1950s, crystal for 500 KC's, plus or minus 2, to give differing notes in the high traffic area around the UK, gave sterling service. I still remember my surprise, arriving at Land's End, to find the reason for the low throaty note being that GLD was actually on 498 KCs and its W5 being boosted by a 5 kilowatt amplifier. Receivers were the Marconi Mercury, which were replaced in the early 1970s by Eddystone EC958s. In the early 1980s, the W5s were replaced by W50s, which were 2 kilowatt transmitters designed and built by British Telecom. The mid-1980s struck fear into all radio officers with the formulation of the Global Maritime Distress and Safety System, primarily satellite-based and no part for WT. The late 80s saw development of computerised remote control systems with Humber, North Foreland, Knighton and Land's End in what became known as the Southern Sector and Port Patrick, Wick, Stonehaven and Colourcoats in the Northern Sector. Ilfacombe and Anglesey WT facilities closed. Land's End and Stonehaven became the distress watch and broadcast stations for their respective sectors. The 500 KC receivers from other stations in the sector been permanently fed to these two stations. Later, the two sectors were combined, allowing an operator at any station to control and key the equipment of any of the other stations. 1992 saw the start of GMDSS transition period scheduled for full implementation in February 1999. The writing was now clearly on the wall. Over the last few years, WT facilities were closed at Stonehaven, Humber, North Foreland and Knighton. Finally, in July 1995, Stonehaven became the sole WT watchkeeping station with control of Colourcoats, Land's End, Port Patrick and Wick. In January 1997, the Coast Guard Agency gave notice to BT that it did not require a 500 KC's watch 
after the 31st of December 1997. For its part, BT decided that with the distress commitment gone, that the commercial working would also cease. 500 KCs would be closed. Listen now to the final WT transmission on 500. The time is 23.48 GMT on the 31st of December 1997. <laughs>
All audio was recorded live at Land's End. The transmission from Port Patrick was made by Graham Mercer, who said later that his hand was shakier than during any SOS situation that he had handled over the last 29 years. Wick's closure message was sent by Tom McLennan, who was retired after many years' service at Wick. Colour coach Geordie Ditty was keyed from Stonehaven, who would have guessed that it was sent by all six staff present, sending a line each, including Bob Baker, who goes down in history as the last man to receive an SOS on 500 KCs in the UK. Keeping the 500 watch on the very day of closure of the service, Bob received the SOS on Land's End's receiver from the motor vessel Oak, listing heavily 750 miles northwest of Land's End. The list was later corrected and the vessel arrived safely in Liverpool a few days later. Land's End's message was sent by the excellent hand of David Nancaro, senior operator at Land's End. We are all indebted to Terry George of Discovery Films for the generous offer and donation of his time and expertise in the making of this video. As well as being coxswain of the Sun and Cove lifeboat, Terry is a top-rate Morse operator and has won several awards on the world stage in amateur radio Morse contests.